Today's topic is whole life insurance policies and flexibility. So when it comes to whole life insurance policies, everyone we work with is primarily interested in the cash value. The death benefit often has value, but the cash value is what people are interested in. How do I maximize that cash value? And then how do I use it? However, with that said, what is often a turnoff to a whole life insurance policy is being committed to a large premium every single year. Or if you're paying it monthly, having to pay that same dollar amount every single month. What a lot of people like with whole life insurance products is when they can design them to be very flexible. So we're going to talk about exactly that today. What we hear quite a bit or what a lot of people like to do with whole life insurance products is have them designed in a manner where they can commit to a minimal amount that never feels like a burden and they can pay that minimal amount yearly. Some companies allow them to pay it monthly and then add more money to the policy at discretion. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Because when we think of a life insurance policy, typically what comes to mind with respect to payments? Well, the insurance company says, here's your life insurance policy and here's the premium you must pay. However, if you're interested in cash value, what you can actually do is set it up in a manner where you're committed to that minimum premium and then 100% at your discretion, you can add more money into that PUA rider in a life insurance policy. PUA stands for paid up additions and that's how you can really accelerate the cash value growth. So what we've got here today, we've got an individual who wants to commit to a small amount and then add more money to the policy at leisure. Specifically, what he wants to do is as follows. He wants the ability to fund up to $100,000 per year, but he does not want the policy to feel like a burden. Key word right there. His cash flow fluctuates quite a bit. This is very common among business owners and real estate investors. They know they can fund a policy with a large amount of money and they want to for a number of reasons, but what they don't want is to be obligated to a high dollar amount because their cash flow fluctuates. So the question we receive is this, what's the minimum I have to pay? What's the minimum premium, meaning what's the minimum I have to commit to with the ability to add more money to this policy? Here's the most important part, policy design. So we've got a minimum premium. This will include the base premium and also a term insurance rider. We'll have a MEC limit. MEC stands for Modified Endowment Contract. We do not want our policy to become classified as a MEC because if it does, the cash value will be taxed if we access it. Specifically, the gains will be taxed as ordinary income. There's potential penalties. We want to make sure that the policy does not become classified as a MEC. I would check out our policy design video, which provides a full breakdown on how to design a policy for maximum cash value and prevent a mech. But then this PUA, PUA rider, which is adding more money to your policy, which immediately accelerates the cash value growth, those can be added at leisure. So let's go through a breakdown of exactly how this works. What we will begin with is the design. So this individual wants to do what? He wants the ability to pay up to $100,000 per year, but he does not want the policy to feel like a burden. So having awareness of the insurance company you are considering, particularly their limits, what's the maximum you can pay into a policy? How low can you go on the premium piece? Because when you take out a life insurance policy, a lot of people are not aware of this, is you, the policyholder, can actually decide where your money goes. Your money can go toward the insurance premium, or toward the PUA rider. With a lot of the top companies, your major mutual companies, you'll often see that that minimum premium can be driven as low as 10%. Now, 10% of what is the question? The answer is 10% of the maximum desired payment. And not all companies are 10%. Some are a little bit lower, some are a little bit higher, but generally you'll see it around that range with the top companies out there. So if I have a 10% minimum premium and I want the ability to pay up to $100,000 per year, what would your minimum commitment be? Well, it would be 10% of the $100,000. So what a lot of people we work with do is a design just like this where they want the ability to go up to 100K per year, 
but only commit to $10,000. Now, staying on that premium piece, if we were to only pay the minimum premium, what you'll find with most insurance products is that in the first year, nothing or a very small percentage of that payment will actually show up in cash value. As the years pass and you continue to make that premium payment, it will come back to cash value. Particularly in the example I'll pull up in a minute, you'll see that beginning year two, the minimum premium begins to come back to cash value, at least a portion of it, and you'll see it accelerate over time. But the first year, the majority of that really purchases the death benefit on life insurance policy, and we don't see much cash value build up. Now this guy, this unscheduled PUA, and again, PUA represents paid up additions rider. We have the word unscheduled here because it's unscheduled, or I should say we can set it up in an unscheduled manner. And if it's unscheduled, all that means is you will not be billed for the PUA payment the same time you're billed for the premium. You can elect to add money into that PUA rider every week, every month, one time a year, no additional funds, it can be very, very flexible. Now what's very important on this point is the company selection is critical. Some companies like Guardian, for example, has an extremely flexible PUA rider where you can do what I just mentioned. You can just add money into PUAs anytime, it can be through your online portal, mobile app, can mail in a check, very, very flexible. There are limits as far as how the policy is designed, which we've got other content that covers that. Some other companies, like Mass Mutual, for example, allows you to adjust your PUA payment one time per year, and we have to pay it the same time as our base premium is paid. So not quite as flexible, but Mass Mutual has some other examples. So that's where understanding the insurance company we're selecting, or if we're looking at a variety of companies, understanding the rules or making sure your agent is providing you with that awareness is important upfront. We don't wanna find out a better option existed after the fact that perhaps provided more flexibility with respect to what we were looking for. But on this point, unscheduled PUA, very flexible. We can add it when we want to add it. PUA payments show up in cash value. You'll typically see, depending on the insurance company and product in the first year, somewhere between 90 to 95% of the payment show up in cash value immediately. Meaning if you made a $10,000 unscheduled PUA payment, the next day you would see anywhere between $9,000 and $9,500 in cash value. And that does begin to compound over time and we will see it exceed what we've paid in typically by the following year. PUA payments do buy us additional death benefit as well, but everyone, is often interested in this rider for the cash value benefit. Now, we see a MEC limit of $100,000. That MEC limit is exactly what it sounds like. What are the core benefits to the cash value that often attracts individuals to these products? There's three of them. Number one is it's a safe area to position money. Number two, it's a liquid. We can access that cash value. And then three, tax-free tax-free if we do not trigger a taxable event. One example is a modified endowment contract. How we prevent a modified endowment contract from occurring is by setting the policy up with the needed MEC limit. So if I want the ability to pay in up to $100,000 per year, I, would, I want a MEC limit of at least $100,000. We can set that MEC limit wherever we want. What you'll find is that it has a direct relationship to an individual's age and total death benefit on the life insurance product. So we've got a 40 year old male in this particular case and with the company and product we selected, we need a death benefit of just over $2 million to accommodate that $100,000 MEC limit. Let's take a look. So what we're gonna take a look at first is a policy with just the minimum going in. And this is going to follow the same model we just looked at. So what we have on the left is as follows. We've got minimum commitment, base plus term rider. Base is the base premium. A term insurance rider is a cost-effective way to add more death benefit, which mainly gets our MEC limit up to where we want it. If we don't add a term rider, what that will force is a higher base premium, 
And the higher the base premium, the less you'll have in cash value, especially the first year. So adding a term rider allows you to keep that base premium low and going back to the, this individual's goals, commit to a minimal amount and be able to add more funds at discretion, a term rider allows him to do exactly that. So each year, he's committed to $10,000 per year, and this example assumes he pays it forever. He doesn't have to pay into it forever, but we're looking at that th this in this particular example. Then we've got unscheduled PUA rider, adding more money into the product. Nothing added. First, we wanna see what the policy looks like if we only pay the minimum. So his net annual outlay is the minimum commitment, $10,000 per year. Then we've got his total payments, which tally up the total payments he's made over time. You'll see year 15 is highlighted in yellow. That represents his break-even point. Break-even represents when his cash value is equal to or greater than his total payments. So if you have ever looked at a traditional whole life insurance policy before, it may have looked similar to this. Traditional whole life insurance products where I just pay a minimum premium often take somewhere between 10 and 15 years just to break even. Not that attractive, I like to refer to it as an excellent example of what not to do if high cash value is your goal. Now with that said, the purpose of showing this example first is because paying just the minimum does generate cash value over time. Granted, it takes a while, it still builds cash value. And when we hear the word premium, we often think pure cost, but in this case, it is building equity, which is important. It's important to note that when we look at the max funded example or when we start to add more money to the policy. So now we've got the whole life death benefit and then also this term insurance rider. The net death benefit is the total death benefit made up of both the whole life benefit and the term rider. So what you'll notice here, as, as time passes, the whole life death benefit increases, the term rider death benefit decreases, and after the seventh year, we removed it all together. I'll add that removing that term rider is optional. This is something that we would recommend to a client we're working with if they want to fund for a short period of time, call it seven years or less, or if it's a situation similar to this, where they plan on adding more money, so we add a term rider so the policy is equipped to be able to handle more payments for them, but then they don't do it. Life happens and they couldn't add money to the policy. If that's the case, what you can do after starting a policy is reduce or remove altogether the term insurance rider. Now, the reason it's done after the seventh year has to do with what is referred to as a seven pay test, which has to do with our MEC test and MEC limit. So the first seven years is important. I promise it's not randomly picked. So this example again shows just the minimum. Now let's compare this with adding more money. So what we're going to look at here is the exact same policy. We've got the minimum commitment, 10K per year, and then here, We've got our unscheduled PUA rider. Now that death benefit of $2,050,000, do you remember how we came up with that number? MEC limit. He wanted the ability to add how much money per year? Up to $100,000 per year. Okay. So in this example, is he adding $100,000 every year? No, he's not. He's adding it in the years he can. Some years it's not up to $100,000. This is meant to demonstrate somewhat random funding. So here's what he's, what he's committed to. And this $10,000 can be paid yearly or monthly. Unscheduled PUA. So the first year adds an, an additional $90,000 for a total of $100K out of pocket. There's his first year cash value, $88,000 and change. What you'll also notice, look at the whole life death benefit here. It's higher than the example over here. And the reason why is because when you add funds to your PUA rider, we always think cash value, cash value, cash value. However, PUA payments do purchase you additional whole life insurance. PUA stands for paid up additions, meaning it purchases us paid up additional life insurance. It's paid up 
because PUA payments are optional. We can add them, but we're not always billed for them like the base premium, not in this case at least. So as we add money, yes, we get more cash value, but our whole life death benefit goes up and our term rider amount decreases. However, the death benefit with this design remains level at $2,050,000. So then what we do the next two years, we add some extra funds, 40K into PUAs. The net outlay each year is 50K. Then in year four, we pay just the minimum, 10,000. Total out of pocket, $210,000 over four years by break even point year four. Interesting, isn't it? By adding more funds into PUAs, look at the improved break even point. That's the key right there. PUAs is, is how you accelerate the cash value growth in a whole life insurance product. So then what we did here, some years add additional funds into PUAs, have a couple years where we go back up to 100K and he gets a total, let's scroll down here, of just over $750,000 into the policy. 775 to be precise, funds it up until age 65. And there's our cash value. Death benefit, what's interesting here is as the term rider naturally decreased, we now have all whole life insurance. So before we wrap up, let's take a look at this exact same scenario, but without any dividends applied. So what we've got next is the exact same scenario. So on the left is what we just looked at, but this is based on the company's present dividend rate. But here, we're assuming in the illustration, no dividends at all. Just the guaranteed rate is applied to the policy. So what happens, break even point is greatly delayed. Between years nine and 10, instead of at year four, like we see to the example on the left. Now this is with one of the major mutual life insurance companies. We've seen consistently deliver strong cash values. However, it is beneficial to look at conservative scenarios, whether it's a reduced dividend or you want to look at just the guaranteed rate to really set expectations at a very, very low standard. And then we end up seeing a lot more money than what we looked at initially. Some people like to do that. I totally get it. Uh, but seeing both options, in my opinion, does not hurt at all. So exact same funding schedule. There's the amount in. There's the death benefit as well. You'll see a significant difference if dividends are not paid. However, if you're positioned with one of the major mutual companies where we've seen them consistently deliver, you should be seeing performance more similar to this. It's not guaranteed, but as we've tracked the actual performance of a policy over time, we've seen that to be the case, which is extremely comforting because when you look at whole life insurance sales, when policies don't deliver or drastically under deliver from what is illustrated, that's where people can get upset. And I get it because it's their money, both based on the cash value, what you have now, and then also based on the death benefit, what's going to be paid out to your beneficiaries. But overall, this study is meant to demonstrate what a policy looks like or could potentially look like if you want to commit just to the minimum only and then add more funds at leisure. It's very common to see individuals do this so the policy does not feel like a burden. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I hope this helps. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.